coming due. Well, inter if interest rates are low, it's easier for them to take out another loan and push back when they need to pay this stuff. It's allowing companies to become zombies, things that are barely alive, but because they can keep taking loans, they can stretch out their lives further and further, even though they wouldn't normally die. If interest rates go up, unfortunately, a lot of these zombie companies need to pay up because they don't have the resources to pay up and they will die. As of June 2019, the Fed has signaled that interest rates will be getting lower. So what this means is that the corporations who are taking on debt are very likely to take on more debt. Almost all of these companies and their leadership have an incentive to make short-term profits at the expense of long-term life. And so it is almost certain that almost all companies that can, in the short term, take on cheap debt will take on cheap debt. What this means is that the situation is getting worse. What this means is that if the Fed continues to lower interest rates, corporations will continue to take on cheap debt and they will try to push the repayment date further and further out. When the repayment date finally does happen, the problem, instead of being a big problem, will be a really big problem. So why would the Fed do this? Don't they have smarty pants in the Fed? If they want to create really big problems, wouldn't they rather just rip off the band-aid and create big problems now instead of really big problems later? Well, it doesn't look like it. So there are two reasons why the Fed might want to keep interest rates low, at least for now. First is political pressure. Uh, there's a lot of pressure coming from Donald Trump, the current US president, for the Fed, basically attacking the Fed to lower, lower interest rates to increase jobs. Now the question is, how does a lower interest rate increase jobs? And the short answer is exports. The lower the interest rate, the weaker the dollar is relative to other currencies, and more likely that people outside the US are likely to buy US products. So value of the dollar that makes U.S. goods more expensive. Foreign goods mean that the people stay outside the country are less likely to buy the stuff we make, right? Which is the growth of the next product. The value of all the things in America and also the jobs. President Trump likely wants to get reelected and will do everything that power to create jobs. Here's the situation. We're in trouble in the long term, and we're in trouble in the short term, no matter what. So, we have two big problems. If the Fed does not lower interest rates, we are likely to have this corporate debt collapse soon, in the next few years, maybe as soon as the next year. But if the, the Fed keeps lowering interest the rates, we are going to be heading towards hyperinflation. Because the way that the Fed decreases interest rates is by like keeping too much. And if you print too much money, the price of everything yes. just takes one way up as the value of your money goes way down. This is a huge problem. You do not want hyperinflation. It's terrible for everyone. Now, the Fed is very likely to keep interest rates low and to push the ticking time bomb further and further back. It's likely to happen in the short term. Companies will start falling from investment grade down to the flat falling into a company that we and as it happens, more and more corporate debt is flooded into the market. Now, the problem with the debt flooded into the market is the value of this will fall. So, large funds like retirement funds, pension funds, will just be forced to automatically start liquidating this corporate debt at any price. Active managers, managers of these large funds who do active trading in order to limit the losses that they're experiencing, they're going to try to identify which corporate debt is likely to default first and proactively sell it. And this is very likely going to create a downward debt spiral when more and more corporate debt is just flooding into the market. There are financial products that are based on this corporate debt that are also likely to fail. And if they fail, the people who hold the debt are likely to fail. It's kind of like the economy is made up of a bunch of bankers who all have one leg and they're about to get in a chicken The whole thing is like it's about to fall down. So the best case is bad. You have this fallen angel effect that happens in the next two years that hurts the world of power. Now the worst case is that it gets super bad. The way it gets super bad is if the fallen angel effect
effect is happening and the Fed decides to increase interest rates. This happens, it's terrible. It basically accelerates that downward debt spiral. So how does this affect the price of Well, I'm going to read from a map that Marty Pan's friends shared in the article. Totally check it out. It breaks down all of what I'm about to say with pretty charts and graphs and make it additional. You have about $15 trillion corporate debt. Active managers of these large funds start moving some percentage of their investments out of corporate debt and into something else. For example, safe haven assets. Of the $15 trillion, 10% goes into safe haven assets. Of that 10%, 2% goes into Bitcoin. And what that means is that there will likely be a way to close everything else happening in the crazy world of crypto. There will be a short term, 15% increase in the price of Bitcoin based on these events happening. The corporate debt bubble is going to have a day of record. And it's either going to be in the next not few not years or almost certainly within the next decade. At the same time, more and more institutional money flowing into crypto with the vast majority of it going into Bitcoin. So we talked about a little bit. A little bit is that corporate debt will be the first domino to fall. And that in the short term, if that domino falls, the value of Bitcoin, in my friend's opinion, will rise by something around 15%. It's my opinion that if more dominoes fall, as they likely will, we will actually see a much more significant move into And in the short term, I think there's an asymmetric effect to Bitcoin, meaning Bitcoin will go up more than any other crypto. But in the long term, what's going to replace normal finance? I think that's where it makes sense to investigate Ethereum. I recommend watching this video on Ethereum to get a better understanding of what it is, how it works, and how it might benefit from our normal money system breaking. I hope you enjoyed this episode. It sounds informative. I also hope you can find the next episode informative. I look forward to seeing you over there. If you trouble, I'm going to talk.
we meet our faith.